reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When he came to land, he was met by a man from the town who was possessed by demons. For a long time, he had not worn any clothes. He did not live in house, but among the tombstones. On seeing Jesus, he began to, sh to cry out, then he fell at his feet and exclaimed at the top of his voice, Jesus, Son of God Most High, why do you meddle with me? Do not torment me, I beg you. By now Jesus was ordering the unclean spirit to come out of the man. The spirit had taken hold of, his, of, his, of him many a time. The man used to be tied with chains and fetters, but he would break his bonds, and the demon would drive him into places of solitude. What is your name? Jesus demanded. Legion, he answered, because the demons who had entered him were many. They pleaded with him not to order them back to the abyss. It happened that a large herd of swine was feeding nearby on the hillside. And the demons asked him to permit them to enter the swine. This he granted. The demons then came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd charged down the bluff into the lake where they drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they took their heels and brought the news to the town and the country round about. The people went out to see for themselves what had happened. Coming on Jesus, they found the man from, from, from whom the devils had departed, sitting at his feet, dressed, and in his full senses. This sight terrified them. They were told by witnesses how the possessed man had been cured. Shortly afterward, the entire population of the Gerizim territory as Jesus to leave their neighborhood for a great fear had seized them. So he got into the boat and went back across the lake. The man from whom the devils had departed asked to come with him, but he sent him away with the words, go back home and recount all that God has done for you. The men went all through the town, making public what Jesus had done for him. Glory be to you, O Lord, glory be to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Slava Jesus Christ, glory be to Jesus Christ. In the book of the beginnings, which is the book of Genesis, the first book of the Pentateuch of Moses or the first book of the Old Testament, we read that God in creation gave us his breath, the breath of life, the breath of God. Since the beginning, human being was close to God, was filled with God in communication, in relationship, very close relationship with God. And then later on we read that as long as this distance between human being who was leaving God was greater than human beings were filled with something else, with envy, with hatred, greed, power, desire of power, just power, and other things. 
St. Paul says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It was at the beginning. That's what, who we are. But this temple could be the cave of the robbers, Jesus says, comparing to the temple in Jerusalem. We cannot be empty. It's impossible. We always, if there is no God, when there is no relationship, close relationship with God through the prayer, personal, through the holy liturgy, the common prayer, reading of the scriptures, acting as God says, which is our nature, a real nature since the beginning. Then we fell prey to other desires and to other things which conquering us. In this particular instance, demons, which cast the human being out of the society, which makes one impossible to live with. That shouldn't be, you know, that strong and vivid example. We can see and we can feel sometimes experience in ourselves that we our, can be a difficult to deal with because I have a point. I want this drastically. I am right no matter what, my way or no way. This is about pride. This is not about to do the right thing, to stand in truth, to discern, to understand. Yes, that's the truth. I stick to it. No, it's about my way. And if there is no God, then there is a trouble. And then we can think, as it's in this short parable that the demons were gathered together to think how to tempt humanity, what to to create what, what, what temptation they can create or figure out to propose. There were different ideas to say the devil doesn't exist or God doesn't exist. And the main demon was laughing because he said, well, the people, a big part of people, they live as if we do not exist or God doesn't exist. So at the end, one came up with the idea about time, saying we have to convince them that they have plenty of time, that they don't have to do this and that to feel comfortable. You have enough time. You don't have to do this. And it was the greatest idea ever. Tomorrow we will be commemorating the great men of the church also called, and I think it's not just exaggeration, a Moses of Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, Metropolitan Andrei Shuptitsky. I think his person sets a good example of a person being close to God, and being an Adam before the falling before temptation by the tree. A person who was well aware of time because he, with the help of God, because he was open to God and developed his gifts, was able to accomplish with the help of other people who were opened to God and to each other, accomplished many things, not by himself. It's not about brilliance of a one person. It's about community, all together, who are watching and looking in the same direction, united around God and with good ideas to help each other and the other people. They accomplished together a lot. 
they were sharing their gifts with other people. They had a noble goal. So I think for us Ukrainians, not just Ukrainians, it's important to read at least a short biography of Metropolitan. And I think we can find even a short sum of his letters, what he was talking about, what was his desire. And we pray for him because he's servant of God, so he could be proclaimed a, a saint, but also as a person of, who was just, wise, and righteous before God and before people to pray for us to God so that we never lose sight from God. So we will be never empty from God. Amen.